Welcome back to another pregnancy vlog. I am currently 32 weeks and three days. So I'm eight months pregnant now, guys. So this vlog is going to be covering weeks 30, 31 and 32. I have a lot to update you on. As you can hear, I sound sick. I feel like throughout this pregnancy, I have had a cold so often. It's just so unlike me, but obviously in pregnancy you do tend to catch things a little bit easier or your immune system can be down and um i basically caught elvis's cold that he had just before we were going away that i think he got from my mum it's just done the rounds basically so i'm getting over it now but i do sound a little bit bunged up bear with let's start by saying it is roasting hot in the UK right now, which I never complain about, by the way, guys, because I love when we have good weather because we just don't get it that often. It's just that we're not equipped to deal with it. Like, our houses are so insulated. We don't have AC. Like, even restaurants when you're out and about and stuff like that, the, the AC is just not the quality if, as if you were abroad and they're a hot country and they just know how to deal with it. And it's muggy, it's smoggy, it's it's just not a nice heat. It's not like as if you've got a breeze or anything. So the, the last like week or so I have been dying and that's why I feel like I wear this so often in these vlogs, but this like t-shirt dress is just so handy to like chuck on because I can breathe in it. It's like got space and yeah so maybe i should start with showing you my bump before i forget to do that although i am wearing a dress so i'm not sure how i'm going to do this um so this is a 32 week three day bump oh, i'll just show you like this guys an eight month bump nice little bump update for you getting big now feeling heavy okay so let's wheel it back to week 30 Week 30, I was feeling more energized again. Definitely, definitely feeling like to nest. Just feeling sometimes frustrated, like seeing things around the house being like, oh my God, this needs to get done before the baby or okay, right, I need to start organizing my baby shower. Even though I've, I'm have i such an organized person, I've had it in my head, like the theme, uh, what I want to do and I've prepared so much from so early on but now it's like all the little bits like ordering bits little bits of decor finalizing things I'm not going to go all out this baby shower I'm just having it in my garden um we're keeping it quite small I mean it's second baby I don't I, I do want to celebrate and I know my personality I will love it on the day but I have said to people like pre-loved stuff is welcome like I'm all for sustainability and I actually just think like I miss that like growing up you know if your cousin had something and they like barely wore and then they like handed it down to you you'd be so like if it was your older cousin you'd be so like oh my god I loved that jumper like that was my cousin's I quite liked that I don't know maybe it's just the way I grew up but I quite liked like hand-me-downs and stuff like that especially if they were super cool um so I've kind of put on the invite to people like if they have pre-loved items um, you know, because there's so much stuff that the babies just don't even wear. Like, I still have stuff of Elvis's that probably has tags on or was worn once. Um, so if this baby is a boy, they literally have a full, sto fully stocked wardrobe, especially because I'm kind of pregnant the same time of year. So they're going to be like around the same size. Even if this baby's smaller or bigger, um, they're going to be the same. They're going to be like seasonally the same age because even if I had another boy but like I was pregnant at a different time of year some of the smaller clothes it wouldn't work out but anyway so I'm kind of prepared if it's a boy and I have so much neutral stuff as well because with Elvis we didn't find out what we were having so initially for the first month or so everything was super neutral anyway and everything we bought and was gifted was really neutral so i'll have the same again if this is a girl um so we don't really need anything i have kept everything like buggies car seats like all the big stuff i've got so i kind of said to people like yeah that might be an idea of sharing with you especially if this isn't your first baby like just for more sustainability because so much does go to waste 
it really does um or i've said books because i just think books like you know they're timeless um so yeah it's been fun like kind of organizing things but i'm definitely feeling myself you know like in your third trimester i can't speak for everyone but for me you definitely get a little bit grumpy i like things bother you because you you feel such a sense of urgency to get things done so i've definitely been a little bit more angsty I would say like a little bit like I'm energized but I'm like things need to get done this needs to get done I'm a little bit snappier um and I'm giving myself grace for that like definitely acknowledging when I do that to people like definitely like Ken or my mum and be like oh okay you know that's definitely my hormones or whatever I mean I haven't been too bad I'm quite a chilled pregnant woman um I know there's that like depiction of a pregnant woman just being super moody and stuff like that but i'm i'm actually not like that but i definitely feel a little bit grumpier in this third trimester stage so that's an update on week 30 oh another thing about week 30 definitely feeling like bigger harder movements obviously i've explained in previous vlogs that i have um an anterior placenta it's very normal um but it's on the front so the movements feel very different to elvis's movements were so sharp and you could fully see like a whole foot come out um whereas i feel like with this baby this baby moves a lot more but the movements feel a lot more subtle so you just have to pay a little bit more attention to them however i haven't really had to because these movements have been so big and bold and like the whole belly moving now um, a lot harder kicks stuff like that but still you can't see it the same way you could with elvis's with my pregnant belly with elvis's pregnancy because i felt like you could see like full-on things come out and with this it's a little bit more like movements it's kind of weird if you see it looks a bit like an alien trying to escape so week 31 i was in france we took our last family vacay um, as a family of three because we're soon going to be a family of four that's crazy i'm we're literally in july now and because i predicted that this baby could come early um ever so slightly early I, i'm like technically next month end of august i could have a baby like that's crazy i know i'm eight months and i'm currently still like seven weeks four days from my due date and obviously you can go over so it could even be more than that but like in my head i'm literally like i could have a whole other human here next month it's feeling very real very very real so um yeah anyway we had our last little family vacay and obviously it's quite late in the pregnancy to go away so i made the decision that we would like either do a staycation or we would do um something that i could drive but in the uk you're not guaranteed the weather and although last week was actually beautiful weather in the UK, as I said, but I prefer to be abroad. It's so nice to get away, isn't it? Um, and also it's really expensive in the UK. Sometimes it works out cheaper to go abroad. Um, so we actually got the ferry across to France and I drove and it was the most beautiful trip. Like it couldn't have gone more perfect. Like it was just such nice family time, really chilled, lots of beach time, lots of good food, like bakeries, patisseries, croissants bread some seafood um just yeah really a really really good family vacay and i just felt like so happy for elvis because he's at that age now where he's three almost four he really gets it when he's on holiday he really loves it like every day we had tears leaving the beach he was like i don't want to ever leave and like i'm pretty sure we kind of had a bit of a moody moment leaving the holiday home because we had an airbnb but I just, I, it just is so, it makes me so happy as a parent when your kid really appreciates and really loves the fact that you're on holiday because obviously not everyone is um, privileged enough to be able to do that and I just love that we're able to do that for him and that he actually loves it and adores it and he's having the best time so yeah I, I actually did film that so I might post up a vlog of that so stay tuned. Um, Oh gosh, I've got still got this really like snotty nose. It's awful. I can't wait for it to be gone. That's been the hardest part in the, the this heat of like being bummed up, like you can't breathe, and then the heat, and then like just. I mean, you can see I've literally got a fan here because like after I film this, I'm literally going to put the fan on me. Um, but just sleep has been an absolute. Oh god, sleep has been an absolute myth 
an absolute myth in this heat. I managed to do loads of reading as well while I was away, which I love. So I finished reading um, the book Manifest. I don't know if I've mentioned it in my vlogs, but I'd highly recommend it. It's Manifest by Roxy Nafusi and I love it. It just, it's, it's really uplifted me. It's made me feel so good. I'd really recommend reading it. Um, and I also listened to a really interesting uh, podcast. So it's an Australian podcaster um, and it's called Welcome to the Womb, I believe. I'll try and link the episode below, but there was an episode on there with a lactation consultant. I believe her name's Olivia from the UK. So I was like, oh, this sounds really good. And the thing is, look, I had a really successful, really great breastfeeding journey with Elvis. Um, we exclusively either breastfed or pumped for like nine to 10 months. Yeah, about 10 months, I, he weaned himself off. Um, uh, you know, this time my intention is to breastfeed maybe even up to a year. Um, the first time around, I just wanted to like know that I could do six months. And look, don't get me wrong, it was hard. But once you get in the swing of breastfeeding, it just becomes the most convenient, easy, best connection, like most beautiful thing. And for me and for our family, it really worked. And I would really like to do that again. But I'm also someone that I do believe like knowledge is power. And I really think that as much as I've done it and I had that experience, I didn't want to be naive and just jump straight into, oh, I know what I'm doing. I have read books. I have kind of touched up on things. I am tuning back into podcasts and information about breastfeeding because I know each child is so different. And if you think about it, by the time this baby comes, it would have been like four, three to four years ago that I would have been breastfeeding. So... I just wanted to like have a little refresher and this podcast episode was so good. It's on Welcome to the Womb and it was with a lactation consultant. I'll link it below if you're interested. It's just got some really like real good tips, but also like like realness to it about bigger boobs, smaller boobs, like positioning yourself. While we were in France as well, I forgot to mention we were doing like loads of walking around and stuff like that. And I have been, you know, either working out or walking my entire pregnancy. Um, definitely though, towards the last couple of days of the holiday, I was feeling like all oh, my pelvis, like my hip area, my legs, I was getting like that achy pain in my legs again. I was getting some random like leg cramps at night. I was definitely feeling very third trimester. I was like, oh yeah, this mum is growing now. I'm feeling like big and I'm feeling like I can feel it in my body. Um, and that's kind of continued into this next week where I am feeling a lot more achier. And it's just requiring me to stretch a lot more or take it easy if I need to, uh, change up my sleeping positions, just a lot more stretching and stuff. I think it's all very normal stuff. And it's interesting because when I spoke to my midwife, she basically was just like, yeah, basically everything's much looser second time round because it never fully goes back. So with that relaxing hormone, everything's just gonna really loosen up. So I think it's pretty normal, but just feeling a lot achier and still managing to walk, but just maybe not every day now. This week so far, I've had a really, like the start of the week, I started really strong. I walked like over 10 kilometers one day and then a couple days I didn't. So I've just kind of like paced myself, just taking it as I feel I'm able to do so really. So week 32, the baby is now the size of a honeydew melon. That is crazy. Like it, honestly, I'm just, sometimes I'm just like, wow, like our bodies, as women are so incredible. Like it does, it's still, you know, the magic of pregnancy, the magic of carrying a child is still very much there for me. Um, I still think getting to this stage, it's, it's actually amazing to think about that side of things. Cause getting to this stage, sometimes you are like, I'm just big, I'm heavy, I can't be asked. So I think just like remembering how incredible it is, like what your body's doing and giving yourself grace, it's just a really good mindset to be in just to get through, like you're on the final stretch. And especially if you're following along with me, like at the same kind of weeks, we're on the final stretch now, guys. Like we're getting there. 
Oh, some really exciting news. I've had some really great family news this month. So my cousin who was due to have her baby, she was actually overdue slightly, um, and she's living in Australia. She had her baby two days ago now. And that's so exciting. She had a baby girl. They knew they were having a girl. So then part of me is like, oh, if I'm having a girl, that's really cute because they're going to be so close in age. I mean, regardless, it's going to be cute that our babies are going to be close in age. But yeah, I was really just like, it was such beautiful news. Um... She was able to like have her vaginally and everything, which is what she wanted. So it, yeah, it's just so exciting. And obviously hearing the birth story and stuff, it makes it feel really real, like, wow, that's really close for me as well. Um, so yeah, so that was some good news. And then we had like a, an engagement in the family. Again, like just tons of good news. It's just, it's put me in really good spirits. Um, it's always nice to hear good news. Oh, I had my growth scan. I had my growth scan yesterday, actually. Um, so, and it was interesting because I've said to you kind of throughout, I think it's because of my thyroid. I think it's because Elvis was a big baby. They haven't really given me reasons why, like, I had these extra growth scans. And whenever I speak to anyone, they're like, oh, you're low risk. I don't know. Like, maybe they're just double checking. And I spoke to the doctor after the growth scan and he was basically like, yeah, I don't think you really need them, but they've put you in for them. And on the NHS, everyone who doesn't know, you don't really get extra scans. So it's almost like he was just like, there's no harm. Like, why not have the extra scans? Um, and my bump measurements are still measuring quite... Um, on the smaller side, but so far the scans have been saying that baby's average size. And then I believe that this growth scan, so it's funny because I think you have to take everything with a little bit of a pinch of salt when it comes to differing opinions amongst medical professionals because the sonographer was like oh baby's measuring a little bit smaller but baby's slightly under the graph where the baby should be the doctor was like oh baby's average no i'm not really worried like there's still progressive growth i think the third scan as a comparison to the graph so we've got two plots on the graph now the third plot on the graph will be a little bit more like determining but like you know baby's a lot smaller than your previous baby but yeah baby's still average size so it's just funny so like i feel like at the moment they are like monitoring that but baby's pretty much average size although like just for anyone watching i just want you to know like from my research there is a 20 percent margin of error when it comes to scans and like sizing 20 percent is huge so so part of me is like i don't think they really know and just further to that like uh, probably another reason why i have a bit more of a laid-back opinion is because the entire pregnancy they told me that elvis was very average sized and then he was born in the 95th percentile which is one of the the biggest so I don't know how accurate it is. All I know is that in the scans, the heartbeat's great, the placenta blood flow's great, the blood flow on the, the head is great. Like, a baby is healthy, and baby is pretty much an average size, so I think that's what I'm going to focus on, and that's reassuring, and I will be having another scan at 36 weeks now. Um, so yeah, so I'll keep you updated on that. I think that's everyone. This this video's going on a little bit long now, so I'm going to try and call it a day, and I will check back in with you in the next couple of weeks and give you a bit more of an update. Okay, take care. I hope you're all doing really, really well and sending lots of love. Mwah.